Let me start by showing you in a control environment uh, how the Petya malware does attack. So I just click on it and you see that immediately forces a shutdown. So the hackers actually for generated, uh, make Windows believe that there was a, a kind of a kernel panic and the machine shut down immediately. No time to send logs, no time to do uh, anything really. And then when it comes back up, it gives you that impression that you that, that is doing that checks this that you saw when in reality is encrypting all of your files. And then when you click on it, it asks you for the for the ransomware. So pretty nasty. So before I show you how we you can detect that easily with the uh, curator, let me first remind you that the best thing here is to prevent this from happening. So if I were a SOC uh, operator, I will go into my Big Fix tab in Curator, which gives me a view into Big Fix, and I will search for which machines are vulnerable to that Samba type of attack, which is what allows this type of malware to propagate. WannaCry and this one, they have that in common, but this one is nastier because of the way that it's uh, forced that shutdown. So I will look here for uh, the CVE 2017-0143, which is one of the ones that uh, that allows this Samba to propagate. And sure enough, that machine that you just saw being compromised fell victim of it. And we have our uh, offense here firing, but let me show you, let me go to the whiteboard to show you the logic, the simple logic that Mutas and I uh, put together to make this happen. So the first thing that we did was actually look at the normal shutdown and we saw that there were Windows event IDs, particularly one that is 1074. When you do a gracious normal shutdown, either from the command line, from the from the Gina menu, from uh, from start shutdown, etc. Anywhere that you shut the machine down, uh, in a normal way, you get a, uh, an event ID 1074. When you have a malware shutdown, you, you don't get a thing. The, that malware forces the shutdown so rapidly that you don't get to see any, any event being sent. But then after the machine boots up to begin to do its malicious deed, then it sends a 109 message, which by the way, is also sent when 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 the normal shutdown uh, uh, comes in, but this 109 is actually a left left over from the bad shutdown that we was done. So it, it looks like it wasn't the buffers, and then when the machine came up, it actually sent that uh, that event uh, 109. So we actually uh, solved this in a in a very simple way. I mean, I'm sure that. Uh, you can devise better ways of doing it. But we actually decided to use a reference set that we know we call normally shut, uh, shut down uh, machines. And we work with three rules. So the first rule, user requests a shutdown, basically detects the Windows event ID 1074. And what it does is it actually adds the source IP of that element into that uh, reference set. Nothing more than that. The next rule, we call it normal boot, basically subtract or, or deletes, the rule deletes the source IP from the reference set once the machine has actually normally boot. Very simple. And then the third rule, the frantic shutdown, basically looks for the 109 event ID from Windows. And when the source IP is not in the reference set, and then that's the indication that something bad happened. And that, one, that rule fires an offense. So here's our offense. And when we display the rule that contributed to that offense, we have that frantic shutdown detected. And as I mentioned before, this rule is as simple as it's a Windows event. The event ID is 109. And is the source IP is not in the references normally shut down machines. So in order to show you this, you just show it firing. 
but let's actually show it when the machine boots and shuts down uh, normally so to do that I'm gonna go ahead and restore the snapshot of course I don't want to save this and um, I'm gonna bring the machine up and I'm gonna uh, show it uh, gracefully and we'll see the reference sets uh, in action so the window machine is up so in the admin tab we go into the reference set and we look for the that normally shut down reference set that we created for this and we see that it has no elements there are two rules associated with it as, as I described you before now let's actually shut down the machine we can shut it out from here we can log in with command line what in, in whichever where you actually shut it down. Let me actually put the, before I shut it down, let me go into the log activity and put uh, the events coming from, from that machine to see that event coming. So we're going to shut down the machine from here and then we're going to start seeing the, the events coming up. And there we have it we have the normal shutdown detected 1074 from the rule that I uh, let me actually show you the rule we can actually do it from the actual event itself we go down to see the events that fire the custom rule that uh, that trigger on this sorry and then we click on it and we see the rule again windows event log and the event id is 1074 and the important part is here in which we dispatch that event that we just saw but also we add to the reference set the source ip into normally shut down machines ip reference set so we should actually go to the admin tab and look into that reference set that was clear before Let me actually look for it normally shut down machine and we have one element in there if we click on it we'll see that that's the 203 machine very good now let's actually power the windows machine up let me actually go quickly to the log activity tab so I filter the events also to show me only the ones that come from the custom rule engine and we see the normal uh, uh, shutdown uh, detected event which come from that rule actually is the normal boot Let's actually see the rules that fire on it and yeah this is the one normal boot then we see that is a Windows event and with the customer uh, uh, I, the event ID is any one of this one and these are event IDs that comes on a normal on a normal boot 6 60 13 and you can put this is an old condition you can put as many as you want but the important part in here is that what this one not only dispatch that event that we just saw but also on the reference sets remove the source IP from it and if we go to the admin tab uh, reference set and we click here on the reference set it should be clean as a whistle and we see we have zero element so very simple way of detecting with curator this new nasty uh, type of a uh, malware worm but again the most important thing is for you to prevent it from propagating by using something of the category of the category of a uh, uh, of a big fix that can easily detect that and has good integration with curator so you can actually see what's vulnerable and take action before this malware uh, strikes and 
one thing I want to emphasize is that we, we took this approach of going from the behavioral standpoint when with us and I uh, were looking at this because if we try to look for indicators of compromise, uh, there might not be time uh, when you do this because as you see, uh, you, you saw how quickly this thing forces the shutdown and begins doing the encryption. So this is not like uh, previous versions of, uh, of malware. This is an arm race and uh, keeps escalating as the bad guys becomes better and better so so we have to be uh, improving our techniques as well